Hi, this is Sam from the Cloud Slang team. Today, I'm going to walk you through the process of authoring your first Cloud Slang operation and flow using the Atom Text Editor. Cloud Slang executes flows and operations. Operations contain actions and perform the work part of the workflow. Flows contain tasks, stitching together the actions performed by operations navigating and passing data from one task to another based on operation results and outputs. Flows perform the flow part of the workflow. We'll write a very basic operation that takes in two numbers as inputs and divides them. Then we'll write a simple flow that passes some values to our operation and prints out the result. When writing Cloud Slang content, we'll be using the Atom Text Editor. We've created a language package for Atom to make the authoring experience as easy as possible, thereby increasing your time to value. You can find the code we're going to write in the examples section of our documentation. It's also used in many of the examples in the DSL reference section. Okay, so let's get started. Here we are in Atom with the language Cloud Slang package installed, of course, and the first thing to notice is the folder structure I've created here. As you can see, the folder contains a file with a .sl extension, the extension used for CloudSlang files. This allows Atom to recognize them as being CloudSlang source files. Let's start by writing an operation in the file called divide.sl. When I start typing the word operation, Atom suggests some CloudSlang code snippets. Here we'll choose the operation snippet, which as you can see, gives us a skeleton for a CloudSlang operation including a documentation section. For our purposes today, we won't be needing that section. We start by defining the file's namespace, which can then be used by other files to reference this one, as we'll soon see. A file's namespace needs to match the folder structure in which the file resides, so here we'll use demo.code. And now we'll enter the operation itself. The first thing we need to do here is enter the name of the operation. The name needs to match the name of the file, which has already been named divide. Now we'll move on to the inputs. We'll rename the first input dividend and remove its default value. And we'll add a second input named divisor. There are of course snippets that come in handy when creating more complex inputs. We'll demonstrate them at the end of this video. Next, we need to define the action the operation takes. An action can either be written in Java and referenced from the operation, or you can write it in Python directly inside the operation. That's what we'll do here. We'll write a Python script. Let's start with a pipe, which is YAML's way of letting us write a multi-line string. And we'll quickly write a short script that will perform the division or produce an error. Next, we'll use the quotient as an output so we can return its value to a flow that might call this operation. And finally, we'll set some custom results. The first result in the list whose expression is empty or evaluates to true will be returned to the calling flow to be used for navigation purposes. So, we'll return illegal if the quotient contains an error. Otherwise, we'll return success. In CloudSlang, both flows and operations can be run in pretty much the same way, so we can test our operation by running it with the CloudSlang CLI. I've saved the file, and here's a command to run the operation and pass in a couple of values. As you can see, the operation has finished with the result of success, and the output we defined is printed to the screen. Let's run it one more time with different inputs to see if we can get a different result. Here we see the operation finish with a result of illegal. Now let's create a flow that will call this operation. I'll save a new file as division.sl and then we can get started writing the flow. Similar to the operation, when I start typing the word flow, Adam suggests the CloudSlang code snippet which gives us the skeleton for a flow. Once again, we'll replace the namespace value. Let's skip over the import section and come back to it in a minute. 
we'll enter the flow section and name the flow division. And then we add a couple of inputs, input one and input two. In the workflow section, we already have a task which we'll use to call the operation we wrote earlier. Let's rename the task to divider and call the divide operation. Since the divide operation is in the same folder as this flow, we can just reference it by name without any qualifications. We'll map the flow inputs to the task arguments. So input one of the flow will be passed to the dividend input of the divide operation, and input two will be passed to the divisor input. Next, we'll publish the quotient output from the divide operation as the variable answer so we can use it later in the flow. And finally, we'll set the navigation for the task so that an illegal result from the divide operation will end the flow by mapping it to the illegal result that we'll create later in this flow. And the success result of the divide operation will move on to the next task that we'll call printer. Let's create that task now by using the standard task snippet and then we'll rename it. There are also snippets for creating iterative tasks and asynchronous tasks. We'll demonstrate them at the end of this video. And now let's reference the print text operation from the Cloud Slang ready-made content. The ready-made content is packaged along with the CLI and is added to the class path automatically. So to reference the print text operation, all we need to do is qualify the operation name. There are several ways of doing so. Here, we'll create an import using the operations namespace. We'll just copy the namespace, create an alias for the import, and paste the namespace. Then we can use the alias we just created with the dot syntax to reference the operation. Let's rename the input and pass a Python expression, which constructs the string representation of the division that we've just performed in the previous task. We can delete the publish section and set the navigation so that a success result from the operation will navigate to the success result that we'll create for the flow. That should do it for our tasks. Now we'll output the answer as output one. And finally, we declare the possible results, illegal and success. And now we can run the flow in the same way we ran the operation. We'll just change the name of the file to run, the inputs, and add the necessary folders to the class path. Here you can see the flow ended with success. Each task that was run is logged, and we can see that the print text operation printed the string we constructed. Let's run it once more, this time with different inputs. And this time, the print text operation didn't run because of the navigation we set up in the flow. And the flow result is illegal. Now I'll show you a few more of the Cloud Slang snippets. These snippets help with remembering proper syntax and ensuring proper indentation. First, we have the input with properties snippet, which contains all the possible properties that an input can have. And here are two different types of tasks, one that performs a regular loop and one that performs an asynchronous loop, where each branch of the loop is executed in parallel. You can see a complete list of all the snippets in the documentation of our language package. That's all for our short introduction. We hope it helps you getting started writing CloudSlang content using Atom. But the truth is, you don't have to write any code at all to start using CloudSlang. You can use our rich repository of ready-made content that is packaged along with the CLI and readily available on GitHub. Thanks for watching. For more information, visit our site at cloudslang.io and check us out on GitHub.